I once knew a guy named Husek, and he said to me he likes the music, but does he like the Sound Blaster X3? And that is the question. At 120 bucks, this is a standalone device that is powered by USB and then connects to itself via USB Type C. So you don't need any additional power connectors. But at this price point, is it worth your money? And this is the thing, when we go to any audio device, we always have to start off with the objective numbers. If they're bad, then I don't consider that unit worth a purchase at all. You're probably going to want to get that thing, put it back in the shipping box and ship it back to where it came from. But the really good news is here is that this thing is actually going to be very desirable for those looking to get some of the best and the good news is, is here with the frequency response curve, it is the best that I've seen here come through the studio with basically a flat line across the whole line there, which means you're not gonna get any bass roll off, you're not gonna get any roll off of the treble side of things, but we did have this in direct mode, which goes up to 32 bit, 192 kilohertz support. It also has a power for 32 ohm up to 600 ohm headphones. I did test out some ortho dynamics on this thing and it did have the power to drive them as well as the bass too. But continuing on with those numbers, when you put it in direct mode, it's basically gonna bypass the onboard creative sound processing device and just go through the DAC, then to amp it to your headphones. But if you wanna go through the audio processing, you're then going to go down to 24 bit, 192 kilohertz on both input and output. Though speaking of the crosstalk, again, another victory here, getting minus 97 decibels. So you're gonna have no leakage on either left or right channel, or at least you're not going to be able to hear it. And then they've got 115 decibel signal to noise uh, ratio here. And I gotta say, with the looking at the THD numbers, they pretty much support these claims where we've got 0.001% measured THD on the noise floor. And these numbers, again, looked pretty good, just like the channel balance, which was perfect. So from the get-go, it's a great device for powering hard to power headphones, or if you wanna get something that's better than bad onboard audio or bad laptop audio, which we took a look at in the recent G3 review that we did last month. And that was uh, coming in with some decent figures too, but this is giving out uh, better objective numbers than that, even though that's half the price, basically. Uh, this does have a few extra features on top of that, where it's also got uh, three preset EQs that you can save into the middle button, and you can go through them with the different color codes, uh, white, purple, and blue. And then on the left, you've also got the ability to change your mic volume, which will then light up red. The default is blue for your standard volume. And then if you hold it down, you've, it's gonna light up green, which will change the channel balance between left and right. So you can swing that with the infinite knob on there. And you can also control this via your smartphone as well, set different profiles and connect to it wirelessly. And the best thing is you can then hook that up to a console and then you can still get the benefits of those three EQs. Or on the right hand side, they've got what is the Super X5 button. And this is another advantage this has over the G3. Where if you guys remember an old technology called CMSS 3D, this is pretty much the new age spin on that where it has a heap of different profiles that can pretty much tailor audio for that particular headphone. In this case, I did make my own profile and I'll give you guys a listen to that soon with the Dolby HD replication, but it did remind me of CMSS 3D. Not the exact same thing, but it did give me better positional cues and it did open up that sound stage a bit more. So we took a look at this the first time uh, back at the start of 2019, I believe, over in Vegas for a CES. And since then they've refined it and they've done a great job where essentially what their intention is, is to emulate live room audio on headphones. And so what I noticed here though was the benefit of the Super X5 tech was that it was giving me much better uh, directional space. And we will test this out in FPS very soon, but I'll give you guys a quick demonstration between uh, direct mode, which is just flat, and then this tech turned on, and then also the surround mode in the SBX profile.
So for my ears, music sounded the best in direct mode. That's how I like to listen to music on headphones. Though when it came to anything where I wanted to hear directional cues, I did prefer the Super X5 mode turned on. The surround mode, I've never been a big fan of that, honestly, in the SBX profile. I thought some of the other features in that profile are much better geared up towards using every day. For instance, the crystallizer, if you wanna add more clarity to low bass voice. Uh, smart mode will definitely equalize the volume, for example, if you are listening to movies and the uh, music is overpowering the voices. And then another benefit on top of that is the optical out, which you can then turn on Dolby Digital Live to support 5.1 or 7.1 digital through that Toslink cable. Though speaking of surround sound, you've also got the manual ports at the back to support discrete 5.1 or 7.1, as well as in the software, you can support virtual 5.1 or 7.1 if you wish. Now, another feature on the X3, which makes it more appealing than the G3, is the mic boost feature. In other words, they've put a better amp on that ADC line. And I'll give you guys a quick listen to the Virtuoso Broadcaster mic with the recording. So this is what it's gonna sound like normally with microphone boost on, testing one, two, three, one, two, three. And the noise is pretty quiet. We can see by that little straight line right there. But let's add on some different uh, sort of things now, like voice clarity. So this is with noise reduction on, but let's go for voice morph. In Into a female. Oh yeah, hello guys. In that recording, I could virtually hear no noise so it was kicking it harder than the G3 was, and it's a great thing if you're into streaming and you wanna give your viewers a great listening experience on a decent mic. However, one thing I will critique about Creative here is that I'd love to see them add in an XLR port where they've previously added in XLR ports with weak amps on that ADC line. This has the strong amp on the ADC line, but they don't add in the XLR port. So maybe in the future if they upgrade it or they make the X3 Plus or something, I'd love to see them add in an XLR port. This would make it perfect for streamers. Basically up until this point, I can't fault anything with this unit. Even the build quality is nice and solid, weighs in at 330 grams, has 130 mil by 130 mil by 40 mil tall dimensions. And I think the last thing we can do here is boot up some FPS give you guys a demo of this Super x fi Tech turned on versus direct mode and then versus their scout mode, which helps to enhance the footstep frequencies via an EQ and see if you guys enjoy this new tech that they've slapped on the X3. So basically from here on in, I'm going to be using this thing when I now play competitively in games. I like that Super X5 feature. Do let us know in the comments section below what you guys thought about it in both of the demos. However, time to critique this thing. There was only one thing I found uh, kind of wrong with it, and that was when you uh, turn it off or essentially unplug it and then plug it back in, it sets back to default mode. Whereas if you had your EQ setting on, or the uh, SX5 on, it'll then reset it, but it won't uh, reset the profiles. They're saved into the unit itself. So I would like to see them via a firmware update fix this perhaps, because the software does allow you to quickly update the firmware easily. So basically that's one thing I found that I could critique, as well as I'd like to actually see them bring back CMSS 3D. 
I absolutely miss that technology. I thought it was extremely immersive. I think the Super X-Fi does add a different experience and I like that too, but I do remember it sounding a bit different to CMS S3D. And of course, if they added in an XLR port as well, this thing would be ultimate. It would be unbeatable for pretty much anyone out there. So then with the X3, this one at 120 bucks, I can recommend this thing. It is really solid if you either want an upgrade or you wanna get the extra feature sets out of this unit. It will power hard to power headphones, does have a great mic input, and it does have pretty much the best objective numbers that I've seen here come through the studio. So kudos to Creative for making this one. And the G3 that we checked out, if you haven't seen that review, I'll put the link up here where that one was coming in with a little portable solution that did fix bad audio problems. Say for instance, if you had laptop audio or really bad onboard audio, you didn't have enough to afford this because that would then easily solve that problem for your ears. The one thing before I get on out of here, I will say devices like this give you a very clean signal, especially in direct mode. Now, even with a pair of Fidelio L1s, listening to 80s tracks, for example, like Lou Graham, Midnight Blue, that's one I've been banging lately, I can hear nuances that I can't really hear on my loudspeakers. So whether you like those nuances or not, me personally, I don't like them, then you may be spending money on something that you may not prefer. So again, audio is very subjective, but that's why I listen to 80s rock on loudspeakers. However, a lot of the new music coming out, especially electronic music, sounds phenomenal on these devices here with a good pair of headphones. So do keep that in mind. Different strokes for different folks. So do keep in mind what you're getting here is really good audio to the point where it may be too good. Anyway, that's about it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And we've got the question of the day as well, which comes from El Cactua. And they ask a semi-serious question. Why doesn't Intel have a strong memorable PR leader? AMD has lovely Dr. Sue. Nvidia has Leather Jensen. What does Intel have? And I kind of do agree with this. Like there isn't any like main figure in Intel that sort of pokes jabs at the competition. I mean, I look at Jensen, he sometimes says something towards AMD and their graphics cards. And then Lisa and AMD, they say uh, they have jabs at Intel and, and also uh, Nvidia. And I like that culture. I think it promotes competition, but I can't really remember anyone from Intel that's poking any jabs or really wants to get up there. Though with Intel, I'd like to see them either enable who they've already got on their employment roster to do a little bit more of this or employ someone to do that in the field where I did ask them, and this is a true story, I did ask them at the events why they didn't partake in that kind of culture and they just said they didn't need to. So maybe they want to, but they said to me that they didn't need to because I've actually asked them this question in the past. So great question. And if you guys have any questions that you want answered, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. But one thing, while we're on that note of audio too, uh, I've met guys in the past that have tinnitus. I don't have tinnitus, but I've met people who have it and they tell me you do not want it very strictly. And that's enough for me to take care of my ears. So when it comes to audio guys, don't be putting really cheap uh, audio, uh, whether it be a crappy DAC amp on a budget motherboard or a laptop and then blasting some cheap headphones because you will damage your ears and you do not want to damage your ears. So take it from someone who's heard a lot of stories about tinnitus, either in person or even on the internet. You don't want that hurting you for the rest of your life. Anyway, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.